Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I am your host, Rob Dial. If you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast episode. And if you're out there and you love this podcast, this podcast and many other videos are also on YouTube as well. We've been growing massively on YouTube, putting up three to five videos every single week. So if you want some extra tips and tricks to improve yourself, go ahead and follow me there. All you have to do is type my name, Rob Dial, and it will pop up. Today, we're going to be talking about the psychology of money. Why? If I'm being honest, money messes with a lot of people. For me, I would say that money dominated my thoughts for like the first 32 years of my life, where obviously it wasn't like all I was thinking about all day long was only money, but it was like it dictated the way I thought about the world. It dictated the way I took actions in the world, everything that was happening to me. And, um, you know, when you grow up and, and you don't have money, like we were, uh, when I was younger, we didn't have any money. My mom applied for us to be on food stamps and was rejected because she had a car and suppose you can't have a car in food stamps for some reason. You know, we didn't really take family vacations, any of those types of things. When you don't have it and you want life to be better, you automatically think, hey, if I make money, it will make my entire life better. The problem with that, though, is that a lot of us come from wanting to make money, wanting to improve and wanting to get better from a place of lack. And that's the wrong place to start. So I'm going to give you a lot of tips as far as how I've seen to change your own mindset and psychology around money to number one, make you feel better about whether you do or do not have it. And number two, teach you how to actually make more of it from changing your mindset around it. And the way that I see money is I see money like energy and to want more money automatically when you want something, it automatically puts you in a place of lack. If I want something, I am in a place of lacking that thing. And it's going to be really hard to get whatever it is that you lack when you're lacking it and thinking about all of the lacking it because more than anything else, you're actually closing yourself off to receiving it. And so we can dive. I'm going to go through a few different things here. I'm going to go through a little bit. It's going to get a little woo woo -wee with me, but it's also going to be very tactical and very analytical as well. Because if you're in the energy of lack, you will always lack. Whatever you focus on the most, you will get more of that thing. So if you focus on the fact that you don't have any, you want more, you will always be lacking it and always wanting more. So if you are in a place of lack, you are in a place of not being able to receive. So if you're the type of person that, <clears throat> you know, you're scrolling on Instagram and you see somebody and they have a successful company and they have a nice car and maybe they're taking nice flights all over the world or whatever it is. And the first thought that pops in your head is, man, screw that person. No, oh, look at them. They're wasting. They're wasting money. That money could be used for other things. Look at all of the pollution because of the fact that they're on these plane flights. And it immediately goes to jealousy or judging. That is the first indication that you are in the completely wrong frequency to be able to make money because you're jealous and jealousy comes from a place of severe lack. And so if you're the type of person who just sees other people online and then judges them based off of what they're doing with their lives, what they're doing with their money, about how they are destroying the environment and how they're not donating enough money and how the, when I, if I had the money that they have, I wouldn't be doing the same things that they are. That judging and that jealousy comes from a severe place of lack. And if you continue to stay there, it's going to be really, really hard for you to create the life, the abundance, everything that you want in your own life. And so let's dive into it. And let's talk much deeper about it. Now, think about this for a second. I always like to give this example to people because it really kind of makes them understand the way that they are around money. I'm going to give a completely different example. It's going to make a whole lot of sense, right? Let's say you have two different children. You have little boy who's child A and you have a little boy who's child B. And child A, they come up to you and they want a toy. You have a toy. You have a blue truck. And you give him this blue truck and he takes the blue truck and he's like, oh... I mean, I don't really like the color blue. This isn't, my favorite color is red, but you're like, that's the only toy that I have. And they're like, all right, fine, I'll play with it. They take the toy truck and they go play with it. And they do what little boys do. They slam it into things and they scratch it up and they mess it up. And another little boy comes up and he's like, hey, can I play with your toy? And the boy that you give it to, child A, is like, no, this is my toy. You can't play with my toy. And, you know, the, then it's dinner time and the child ends up leaving their toys all over the place. And they don't really seem to care. They weren't appreciative and they don't share it. And they're just leaving their crap all over the place. That's child A, right? 
child B, let's say you give him a blue truck and he takes the blue truck and he says, oh, thank you. And he takes a blue truck and he plays with it and he has fun, he plays with his other toys with the blue truck. And then another little boy comes up and he's like, hey, can I play with your blue truck? And he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, you can play with my blue truck. And he shares his blue truck and he lets him play with the blue truck. Then it's dinner time and the boy takes two minutes, takes all of his toys, puts them back to where they were. You know, it makes it at least a little bit more clean than it was. Next time that you have a choice to give a toy to a child, would you rather give it to child A, who seemed like an unappreciative little crap, didn't take care of it, complained about it, didn't share it, didn't put it away, didn't take care of it the way that he could have? Or would you prefer to give it to the child who said thank you, who shared it, who appreciated it, who put it away the way that he should have when he was done with it? Which one would you rather give it to? You'd rather give it to child B, right? Why? Because they took care of it. They were grateful for it. They shared it. They you know, put it where it was supposed to go and put it away when they were done. So let's flip that toy example into the way somebody receives money. Are you more like child A or child B when you're receiving money? So let me give you an example. When you get your paycheck, do you look at your paycheck and you're like, oh, damn it, it's not enough. I'm still not making as much as I want to. And then you see somebody who you could donate money to and you're like, I don't have enough. I'm not going to get donate any money to them. You don't budget it. You don't pay attention to it. You don't take care of it. You're not grateful for it. Are you that type of person? Because if God or the universe or any of that exists, higher power, and they have this opportunity to flow energy into you, flow money into you, are you more like child A, who's kind of a shitty little kid, if we're being honest, or child B, who takes care of it, who's grateful for it, who says thankful, for, thank you for it, who shares it? Which one are you more like? So think about this. If you're more likely to give a toy to child B because they say thank you, because they are grateful, because they share, because they take care of it, if the higher power that might exist out there has an option to give you money or someone else money, are you being more like child A or are you being more like child B? It's really important to think of. How do you receive money? How do you think about money? What is the frequency of money to you? How do you feel when you look into your bank account? Do you budget your money? Do you know where it's going? Are you taking care of it? Are you sharing it? Usually when I say this to people, they're like, oh, light bulb, holy shit. I've been kind of like a crappy little kid with my money. Why would anybody want to give me more? Because I'm not taking care of it. And so, you know, when you receive your paycheck, are you like, oh, damn it, bills again, you know, I'm not going to have as much as I want to. I'm going to be able to pay my bills, but oh, God, I wish I was making more. I wish I had more in my bank account. I wish I was doing something different with my life. I fucking hate my job and this is what I'm getting paid for. How do you receive your paycheck? Think about that for a second. What is the energy of receiving your paycheck for you? How do you feel when you look at your bank account? I'll give you another example to kind of think about the energy that you're in. When you go and you're walking down the street and you happen to see a penny, five cents, 10 cents, whatever it is on the side of the road, do you just walk by it or do you pick it up and put it in your pocket? I remember hearing this years ago and it changed the way that I started perceiving and also receiving money. So I used to just walk over money. But think about this, for instance, if the universe, God is going to give you five cents, and put it as an option there on the floor. You might be like, oh, but it's dirty. Are you just going to walk over it and just let it go? Or are you going to pick it up, put it in your pocket and say thank you? Because here's one thing I'll tell you. I'm going to say this a couple of times throughout this episode. If you cannot be trusted with a little, you will not be trusted with a lot. And so if you're going to walk over and be like, oh, it's not worth it for me to pick that up. Why would it be worth it for, you know, if you don't even want that little amount, why would a higher power want to give you any more? Think about that for a second. Do you stop? Do you pick it up? Do you say thank you? One of the things that I learned years ago, <clears throat> I started doing this about five years ago, is every time that my company gets a payment inside, I get I, I rarely get notifications on my phone. But every single time that my company gets a payment in some sort of way, my Stripe and my PayPal, both of those things set off, and I know that a payment just went into my company's bank account. And if I see it, you know, if I'm in the middle of doing something and I'm just sitting there and I see it go off. As soon as it comes in, it could be for a couple thousand dollars. It could be for $47, whatever it is. I take four or five seconds 
close my eyes, say thank you, and go on about my day. Because it's me being trusted with a little, it's me being trusted with a little bit more, and I'm in the energy of, I want to receive and be thankful for everything, no matter what it is. Even if it's $3 that come into the account. If I can't be grateful for $3, I can't be grateful for $3,000. What if all of this money thing and the way that we view it was just a test from the universe to see how you respond to it? I'll give you another example that, that really changed a lot for me. <clears throat> when you see someone that's on the side of the road, homeless, whatever they might be, do you ever give them money? Or are you the type of person that's like, well, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with that money, so I don't want to, I don't want to give them money because I don't want them to go buy drugs. I don't want them to buy alcohol, any of that stuff. What do you do? Think about that for a second. What is it that you do? How, what is your typical response whenever you're around somebody who has less than you? The one thing that I decided to do years ago when I really felt like I was in a place of lack as far as money goes, and what I did is I forced myself to actually give 21s out to 20 different people. And what I realized is I went from a place of feeling like severe lack to actually starting to feel like, man, I've got more than I need. Because I think that subconsciously, if I'm in a place of lack and then I take and I can, my brain can see the transfer from, of $1 from myself to someone else's hands and I still think in my head, man, I can still pay my bills. I can still eat. I can still take care of myself. Therefore, I must come from a place of abundance. Because all too often, all of us have a scarcity mindset in some way. I don't have enough. I can't share it. I can't, I gotta, I gotta hoard it because what if something happens in the future? If we come from a place of scarcity, we will only create more scarcity. If we come from a place of abundance, we will only create more abundance. And so what I started doing is I made it years ago a practice just to give out, you know, whenever I'd run out of out of money inside of my my car, I would go out and get 21, 20 more dollars and then 20 more dollars and 20 more dollars all in one so I could just hand it to people. And I think I started brainwashing myself to actually going from a place of I don't have enough to look at that. I just gave some to somebody and I can still pay my bills. I can still eat, which means that I must come from a place of abundance. I must have so much abundance in my life that I can give to somebody else and still be able to take care of myself. Because that's what abundance means, right? Not just paying the bills, but having a little bit more. Not having millions of dollars more, but just having a little bit more. And so how can I start to brainwash into my subconscious that I am not completely broke? I might have a couple extra dollars that I do come from a place of abundance. Because if I focus on scarcity, I'll get more scarcity. If I focus on abundance, I will get more abundance. And so a lot of people are like, well, I don't have enough money to donate though. Like once I become a millionaire, then I'll start donating money. Once I become a millionaire, then I'll start taking care of people. Once I become a millionaire, then I'll start doing this. I had a really good, super successful mentor of mine that is a, a hardcore philanthropist as well. So tons and tons and tons of money donated. His goal in life is to donate $100 million before he dies. And he says, if you won't donate $1 from $10, you won't donate $100,000 from a $1 million. So becoming somebody who donates and who gives doesn't start when you are successful. It is actually something that you start on the journey to becoming successful, on the journey to becoming abundant. And so if you take that and you realize, okay, this guy's, this guy's goal is to donate $100 million in his lifetime. He's currently, as of right now, recording this, worth over $100 million himself. And his goal is to be able to donate, by the time he dies, $100 million. And he said, if you won't donate $1 from 10, you won't donate 100,000 from a million. But if you can't be trusted with a little, there's no way that you're gonna be trusted with a lot. And so what is your perception around all of these things? What is your perception about how you receive your paycheck? What is your perception and your feelings about how you look at your bank account, how you feel when you think about your bank account? What is your perception of if you are more like child A or if you are more like child B? What is your perception of if you see money on the ground? What is your perception of people who are on the side of the road or people who are sitting there that could receive money from you, but are you coming from a place of scarcity and going, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Because here's the thing. We never make money. You don't make money. We receive money from other people, from companies, from other people, from everything that we do. It's just an energy exchange and everything that we do. So we never, we never make money and we never own money. 
It just comes into us and then out of us and into us and out of us. Just like food, you eat food, it goes out of you. You eat food, it goes out of you. You have money in your bank account, the money goes out of your bank account. You have money in your bank account, your money goes out of your bank account. It's just a flow of energy in some sort of way. And once you start to realize that money is energy and you stop take, putting the, the importance of it, so much importance on it, which I did for a really long time, but you realize it can create experiences. It could create experiences for yourself, for other people. You can give it to other people. You can provide for other people and you can come from a place of abundance and not from a place of scarcity. You start changing the way that your perception, the way that you perceive money and you can actually start, per, start perceiving differently, which means that you can also start receiving differently as well. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me at Rob Dial Jr. R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. And I'm gonna leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you and I hope that you have an amazing day.